like you and how old were you how old was he when you was dealing with uh, him? i worked on the queen's bridge finest album with mm -hmm. him yeah yeah Yo, no faces four four blazes no one safe this music mogul rolling with a hundred soldiers uh, yeah he had, he, he had just um, he brought this young up and coming artist to the studio. His name is 50 Cent. Hey! <laughs> he brought 50 Cent yeah, with him when he came. his very first record. Bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a robber still. You better recognize. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. So, you know, researching you was so easy. You know, it was with ease because. Mm -hmm other people that you've worked with man you work with so many people when it come down to it like uh hey Nas sticks out for me Nas and what was it Damian Marley mm -hmm. I don't want to mess that up you know yes. but that Madonna was, yeah Madonna but I want to talk about Ty yeah let, let, yeah don't don't just speed by Nas and <laughs> Damian yeah, like right. that you know I, I really like I said Nas is one of the ones for me you know I've been I've been really really tapped into hip-hop for a long time and and you know being that he's one that you know, he's been doing it for a very, very long time. I remember seeing Roxanne Shantae say, she told him, boy, don't come back over here in that movie. She said, don't you come back over here unless you got your rhyme I thought together. about that same Don't part. you bring your butt back over here. <laughs> and he remembered that, and he got himself together, of course, dealing with people like you. And how old were you? How old was he when you was dealing with uh, him? I worked on the Queen's Bridge Finest album with mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Yes. Yo, no faces, four, four blazes. No one safe. This music mogul rolling with a hundred soldiers. Uh, yeah. He had, he, he had just... Um, he brought this young up and coming artist to the studio. His name was 50 Cent. Hey! <laughs> he brought 50 Cent yeah, with him he when he came. On his very first record. Bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a robber still. You better recognize. Wow. 50's very first record. What's the name of the first record? I don't remember the name. Yeah, of the but he was probably talking about somebody. It was before. He, it was his second record that really blew up. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Did wow. you did you get y'all talk often and go over the music or y'all didn't even talk? Yeah. Oh yeah. We worked closely together. Close in those, together. In those days. See, that's what I miss a lot about the, especially in New York City, in all these studios, the Hit Factory, you know, quad recording, unique recording. It was like the vibe. We were all in there making these tracks together, like every day, every night, all night. And the vibes, you know, we got to eat together and, you know, talk about the music and just, it was a really great time. It was a really good time in hip hop. Those wow. Early hip hop records, especially with Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, and all of those guys. It was, I, I, I love those days. I was very blessed to be in that, you know, in those Yeah, songs. in the midst mm -hmm. of that, like, like mm -hmm. hip hop. Hip hop, yeah, you know, I, you from the East Coast, you know what I mean? I, I used to have problems with y'all because I just feel like y'all such arrogant people. <laughs> you know, like y'all brought hip hop, the Mecca. You guys are definitely dope. I love, if I'm gonna go, I'm Rakim, Eric B. I'm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm EPMD, I'm uh, MC Shan. Um, yeah, I can keep going. You know, KRS One. Mm, I'm, I'm crazy. the, I'm, I'm with the original Dun Dollars, the Run DMC, Fat Boys. Uh, you know, that's me, Cool Mo D. Even when he, well, is Cool Mo D up there with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. So you know, that's me. You know. Yeah. Now, when you get down here a little bit more, here we come. You know, there's, there's a litany of a second generation that comes after even that. You know, a third. Y'all could say third generation, right? Mm. Cause when you talk about Cool Hurt and all those guys, yeah. it, how far did you go back with it? Did you the start of hip hop? You was right there. Nineteen eighty two. You was right there. Yeah, but the yeah, my first job in the studio. I was eighteen years old, um, and yeah, it was with Melly Mel and Grandmaster Flash, Zulu Kings, Africa Bombada, yeah, Africa yeah, Islam, yeah, and you know the, the Lin drum was a new drum machine, and the eight hundred eight. So we were rocking those drum drums, drum machines back in. Everything was you know analog and. It was a great time. Did you ever time. work with Ice T? Yeah, I've done a couple of things. I worked on his first album. Uh, was it Ryan Pace? I think mm, it, I did I the think Ryan so. Pace mm -hmm. album. Yeah. Wow. How was it working oh, with Ice T? He was wonderful. Was, I think we did that whole album in like a week. Mm. We really? really I, re I just remember it was like every day, boom, boom, boom. He's very easy to work with. Yeah. He, oh, he was great. Because yeah. he was from and Jersey also, originally yeah, too, Jersey right? Y'all both from yeah. Jersey. And he was also a member of the Zulu Kings. Exactly. With Grandmaster, no, with Melly Mel, Kaz, Grandmaster Kaz. Ice T and who was, was it is Africa Islam I think because mm -hmm. I remember Zulu he said Kings. that cause we interviewed him so I remember he he spoke those about those were that. great records mm -hmm. the, the beach my car you know they were great records <laughs> I, I can still recite all those rhymes I remember all those but out of everything that you could have um, branched off into why did you branch off into hip hop you could there's so many other genres of music at the time 
Why did you go into well, hip hop? Well, at that time, I was an intern. I was just learning, and mm-hmm. I got a job at a recording studio. I was 18 years old, and I would just got thrown into these sessions. And okay. these are the guys that would come in late at night, mm-hmm. and then they started calling the studios and be like, "No, we want the, the white dude with long hair because I used to have long hair." It's like, "No, we want to work with him because you know because I would rock the drum machine right. with those guys." And I wasn't like your other engineers that just mm-hmm. sat there. And push right. a button you know right. that was you not got me into I got it. involved because I'm so, a musician first so. but who who took you because when you first was an intern and you got there you know somebody usually take you under their wing to show you the ropes mm. of how to do things and stuff who was that person for you the owner of the studio left me the keys that's and it I just lived there 90 hours I stayed at the YMCA I didn't even have a place to live right. I lived at the YMCA for 50 bucks a week exactly and I slept on the couch and I worked in the studio 90 hours a week because when you moved there you moved with I heard was fifty dollars in your pocket That's or something it. like that. You didn't have no money. You quit your job and you just said, "You know I what? On I'm going to." I was ca- shoveling horse manure every morning. Wow! <laughs> and you branched off into this and blew up. Yeah. Did you ever imagine this is where you would have ended up? No, not really. <laughs> and it was never even about the money or the fame or anything. I just love music. Mm-hmm. It's a savior to me. It saved my soul. It just, I know, I went through some rough times as a kid, and it really really gave me hope right. and uh, just it, it's such a deep part of my soul ever since I was really really young mm-hmm. and uh, I just knew that's what I had to do it was never about money it was never about fame still to this day so um, I know that you branched off into reggae um, what is the difference of producing like your hip-hop compared to producing a reggae music I know there has to be some things that you had to learn and there are adjust differences to. and there are similarities too okay. the, the differences I mean the, there's a soul uh, in both of these the mm-hmm. genres of music that's uh, you know slightly different the, the tones the tonal aspect in terms of production for the Jamaican stuff is all about those tones of getting mm-hmm. the bass and the drums and those rhythms to sit right right okay so, and you feel it you know it just sits right and where hip hop is a similar but different, it's a little bit more aggressive in some some okay. regards, and a little more straightforward pounding, you know, in terms of quantized clock kind of vibe, okay. you know. Okay. Whereas the the, the reggae is a little bit swingy, a little loose, you know, which is nice. Almost every reggae makes you want to dance. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Wow, I, I just you know when I think about you and everybody that you've been in that studio with. That there had to be some great times in there over the years, you know. Yeah. I know it kind of took away when they started, you know, send me that. Oh, you could just send it to me. Just send it. Yeah. You was before that. No, I missed it. You know what I mean? Days. Yeah, it was just nice. Every, now it's all like, of us send together. me this, send me that. Oh, send me this. All right, all right I'll send it to you. Right. You know, you don't have, and it take away yeah. from the essence. How much do you feel from the time you guys started to, go, to going into the phase now of where everything's so digital? You know what I mean? Everything's so different. Uh, everything's, n- people don't do really care to, I don't need a deal. I can be independent. I can blow up online. Social media's here. Yeah. How tough is that transition? Well, I mean, for me, I'm just blessed to have the skills that I have to make. I'm a song guy, so I know how to make songs be the best. So mm-hmm. I want to make the song the best it can be. So bringing out the elements of the song to just all the, the best elements to give it the vibe that it deserves, you know, to come across um, accurately uh, for the artist, uh, for the song itself. Um, so that's the way I've always approached it. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, it's, I've been blessed with that because it's been a very interesting transition. The music business has basically redefined itself, right, mm-hmm. over the years. And exactly. To watch that take place through mm-hmm. the 90s, especially the mid 90s when everything got digital. When, you know, Some people couldn't transition. And and people fell off. And then the then the advent after that of the independent labels right. and the independent artists. Exactly. And the, the, mm-hmm. Yeah, the different roles that the major labels play now. And, yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.